So with Godzilla X Kong, the new Empire officially being released in theaters, I figured it was the perfect time to finally take a look back at the MonsterVerse and rank these movies from the worst to the best. Coming in at last place, I'm going to have to go Godzilla 2014 with this one. Uh, none of the movies on this list are bad movies in my opinion. To a certain extent, I do have a list of which ones I prefer over the others, and this is just my list, and it's not yours. And in my personal opinion, I think Godzilla 2014 had a lot of potential to be good. And if you look at it from the scale of the MonsterVerse, I actually think that it's the best MonsterVerse movie in the sense that it displays the scale of the creatures very well. I also think the first act is very, very good, and set up a movie that could have been really really amazing with Brian Cranston in there but unfortunately after Brian Cranston passes away in the movie and we are stuck with these very bland human characters the movie just starts going very downhill getting very very boring also there's a huge lack of a Godzilla in this Godzilla movie as well and the moments he does get are pretty awesome but are so few and far between and we get so many teases that it just feels tedious watching this movie most of the time and I've fallen asleep watching this movie many times a movie that had potential to be really good, but just flopped in a lot of regards. Coming in the next place is Godzilla King of the Monsters. Uh, my mind has changed the most on this MonsterVerse movie. I used to think that this movie was the best for a while, uh, especially as a Godzilla fan. This is like the fanboy Godzilla movie. That being said, this movie is not necessarily accessible to all broader audiences. And I have heard a lot of people's complaints based on this movie saying that the human characters are very throwaway in this movie and I agree rewatching it the human characters in this one are well a little bit better than the last one and they do have some funny jokes with them and some funny banter and some really you know fun character moments but not enough to warrant their screen time and really they tend to drag the pacing out quite a bit um, that being said the monsters in this movie are fantastic and it's like they heard the complaint from 2014 it's Godzilla and just threw a crap ton more Godzilla in this movie. It's a lot of Godzilla in there and there's a lot of callbacks to original films. We have classic Toho monsters in there with Rodan, Mothra, and Ghidorah. We have references to other characters that are in this movie as well as mythologies. Uh, Michael Doherty is clearly a Godzilla fan and directed this for the fans but just not for a broader audience and the story could have used a lot more work in streamlining and the human characters oh, were just still pretty bad. Coming in next place we have Kong Skull Island. Uh, arguably, if you, I objectively looked at this movie on its own, this is the best in the MonsterVerse. It has a very well balanced list of human characters. Uh, they're very fun, they're funny. There's a balance between that and the monster action. I think it's a really solid Kong movie. It does Kong a lot of justice. Uh, the human characters really do not overstep their roles and boundaries in this movie. And we have Samuel Jackson versus King Kong in this movie, and it's an arc that's played very well. Uh, I love the, the references to Nam in Skull Island's design. It's a very different interpretation of that land. It's just overall very fun popcorn movie, and th this movie came out, I think, around the time of Rampage. I may be mistaken, um, but this gave me the feeling of Rampage, but just a lot less annoying characters. And I had a lot of fun watching this. I actually watched this movie the most out of the MonsterVerse because I just have a lot of fun. And even when I saw it in theaters, this was the most that I've seen out of all the MonsterVerse movies in theaters. I, I mean, it was very entertaining. Um, that being said, it's still not a fantastic movie. Uh, but the next two on the list, they're not fantastic movies. They're just biased. Next up, we have Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, Adam Wingard decided to give us a lot more monsters and gave us solid minutes of just monster mayhem between Godzilla and Kong and Godzilla destroying human bases and blowing up parts of the city and taking down the military and Kong's adventure into the hollow earth establishing some lore with his family and his ape culture and then fighting off against Godzilla at the end Facing off against Mechagodzilla in a tag team match with Godzilla and Kong vs. Mechagodzilla. This movie is crazy, but it's very, very fun. And this reminds me of kind of like what they did with Godzilla vs. Mechagirus, where it's a lot of silly elements in there. It still takes itself a little bit serious at some times, 
but it's a very very fun watch and this was the perfect time that this movie came out because it was after a pandemic people were starting to come back in the theaters and a lot of people loved it and I loved it myself it's a very fun popcorn movie uh, still a little bit slow in some of the middle part with the humans taking Kong into hollow earth I mean the humans are a plot device and this movie objectively is worse than Kong Skull Island, but it gives me more of what I want from these movies, which is embracing, and that is just the monster action. I, I think that the monster action in this is fantastic. But the next one I think is top spot in my opinion, and that is Godzilla X Kong The New Empire. Uh, a terrible, terrible movie. I'm not gonna lie to you. The plot is bad. The human characters are even worse written than all the characters in the MonsterVerse combined. There's no characters. But the monsters in this movie, that's where they've put the focus on. Uh, there's a lot of just monsters in here. Like, even if they're not fighting, there's a ton of monsters in here. And it's no dialogue at points. It's just them, you know, conveying through body language and kind of talking to each other. I love the way they handled the monsters in this movie. And then also leading up to the action, uh, this movie never felt like it slowed down at any point. When the human characters were stupid, they were stupid, but they still moved you back to the monsters as quick as possible. The pacing never felt like it dragged at all. The way I can explain this movie is that it's a modern day Showa era Godzilla movie. And I'm talking about like stupid Showa era Godzilla movie. But in the best type of way. It's like Mecha Godzilla in modern day. And I had a blast watching this. Uh, with the way they had Kong, you know, on Hollow Earth setting up traps and surviving and encountering Scar King and meeting Lil Suko and taking him under his wing and the way Godzilla is on the surface beating up monsters randomly, taking their territory, growing stronger through nuclear energy, getting ready for his big battle and his new evolution. A lot of great monsters in this and that's where the focus was and the characters, again, are non-existent but they're not on screen for so long where it never feels like a drag. It just kept moving like lightning fast pace even when you stop to think like wait that's kind of stupid it moves you on to the next thing and this is the most entertaining out of all these movies and it's lots of fun a giant toy commercial and it brought the little kid out of me that has not been brought out in all these movies and for that i think it's just my number one spot based on bias but my list is not the right list comment below your list down below in the comment section like share and subscribe today to join the idealization